AI tools are reshaping our fits and they're making what were complex and time consuming tasks ridiculously easy. So in this video, I'm going to show you what tools any ArcViz artist can easily integrate into their existing workflows. We'll look at some examples and we'll see how they're set to transform how we approach ArcViz. But first, is AI a threat to ArcViz? Is it devaluing it? And is it going to take all our jobs? Technological revolutions have happened before. The internet was met with fear and skepticism, but ultimately led to greater prosperity and revolutionized our daily lives. And I think we're fortunate to be witnessing and participating in a similar shift. Ask most people how they're using ChatGPT and they'll say it's fun for a poem or two, but how they're using it isn't really groundbreaking. The people who are really using it are seeing the benefits. The reason I got into 3D was I loved this merging of creativity and technology, and technology made the creativity more accessible to me. Powerful tools need skilled hands, and we've been crafting art with technology for years. Our roles are certainly evolving, but experts are still needed to harness technology effectively. So I don't see these tools as replacing the artist's role, but assisting and amplifying it. And while we can't predict the future, understanding our current landscape is crucial. So let's explore some easy to use AI tools that can fit into your current workflow straight away. This first tool is an image upscaler and enhancer that feels like magic. So you may have seen this image of Lara Croft from the PS1 get upscaled to this. And as soon as I saw it, I knew we had to get involved. So let's start off by uploading a pretty standard ArcViz image. And I'm gonna leave everything at the defaults and hit upscale. So this is the image with just the defaults on and we can see the upscaling in action. The leaves start looking more crisp and you can see the weathering on the building itself, which in 3D is a pretty drawn out process where you'd need to use dirt maps and complex materials. This black wooden material looks a lot more realistic and I really like the detailing and weathering it's added over here on this garage. So this is the before. And this is the after with just the defaults on. So now let's take a look at some other examples. This was an image for a kitchen appliance manufacturer and the upscaling looks great. But if you take a look at some of the details, it does do some funky stuff. So it's not perfect, but something we can improve with prompts, which we're gonna have a look at shortly. But overall, it has attempted to make the image look more realistic. And the guy has aged pretty heavily, but take a look at the bottles down there and even the outside and the plants look better. So we also have sliders over here like resemblance and creativity that you can play with to try and keep hold of this guy's resemblance if you wanted to. Or you could always just Photoshop in the original if you wanted to keep him exactly as is. And you might recognize this image from the course and take a look at the detail it's added. Quite the improvement. So here's the before and the after. And on a standard studio render, it makes the image look a lot crisper. I'm really impressed and I see this becoming a solid part of my post-production workflow. So onto the sliders, this was with the default settings. And then this one has a resemblance of five. So it's trying to keep the image more similar to the original. And this was with creativity at 10. So it let the AI go wild. And it's changed the chicken to bread. It's changed these bottles and it's added some books and all sorts of stuff up here. So that's not ideal. And you can see that all of this AI stuff isn't exactly perfect to use as is. Now this was an illustration I recently did for a travel company and it even does the hands really well, which we know AI is generally not too good at, but this really does give that extra photo realism to the image. So the prompt tool has proved to be super handy. So now I'm gonna write a leather chair with a fabric throw. And for creativity, let's plump that up to three and I'll put one on for HDR. So this gives it more definition and detail and the creativity lets the AI hallucinate what should be there. And I'm gonna leave the resemblance as is and we've got options to use different engines, but I haven't personally explored them yet. And we do have these different versions, but so far the standard version seems to be working just great for all these 3D renders. So let's upscale that and see how it looks. And it's really made that level look nice. The throw, not so much, and the flowers have completely changed. But all in all, I think the image looks better. But this is where the prompts come in. So now we can write white orchids, and we'll give that another go. And we've got much of the same on the chair, but can you see the orchids are now just as we want them? 
I'm still refining the parameters to use with this tool, but it's become a solid part of my workflow before I hit publish or send images out. And this tool is called Magnifique AI and its simplicity and power is Magnifique. Remember when rendering animations took hours, even days? Well, I think that's about to change. I imagine you've seen the text to video tools, but for me, they just aren't there yet for ArcViz. But in the meantime, years ago, animations were made with hand-drawn frames. The master artist would draw the main frames and the juniors would fill in the gaps. So at 30 frames a second, you'd need 30 hand-drawn frames. Then with 3D graphics, you'd set the animation up and the computer would render each frame. And if you've ever tried to render out photorealistic animation, you know it can be costly and time consuming with the need for powerful computers. And now behold, a method that incorporates the traditional animation techniques and 3D graphics. All right, so let's take a look at an animation I wanna send over to a client and using a full 3D workflow, there's 300 frames. And if I hit render, I know that each frame of this animation is gonna take about three minutes. So by that mass, we're looking at 900 minutes or around 15 hours. Using a pure AI workflow, we're probably gonna end up with something like this. But by using 3D and AI combined, we can actually render every temp frame, put the range on and we'll put every temp frame. So it'll render a zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. So instead of 15 hours, it's gonna take 90 minutes. And then all we have to do is upload the images, make sure that they're in order as well. And I'm gonna set a time limit. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit shorter. I found it works a little better. And I'm gonna hit generate. And let's take a look at how that's worked out. So there's some flickering and I can see there's a problem here. And just at the end there, there was another frame that got messed up. And all you have to do in this case is render out the frame in between this one and this one, and it will give it the information it needs to fill that gap in. So this is Runway's frame interpolation tool, and you can export your AI assisted animation, run it through an upscaler like Topaz AI, and you'll have a high resolution version and your animations have taken one tenth of the time. And up next, let's tackle 3D humans. So is there a way to improve them? I'm glad you asked. So here's a person straight from Cosmos with a HDRI and it doesn't look too bad, but what we can do is import the texture and notice over here we have recovery face on and let's go over to his face. And if I turn that on and off, you can see the difference and that's the before and after. So then all we got to do is save this out. So this was before and this was after. And obviously this can be done on all your textures, not just humans. And this tool is called Topaz Photo AI, and it's the face recovery where I think it really excels. Have you ever been bogged down with client requests? I've found a photo editor with some powerful AI capabilities. So one of the most common requests from a client is, can we make the sky bluer? I've opened up our architectural image from earlier, and the first thing I wanna show you is this sky replacement. I know there's other tools out there, but I've not seen a tool that can make the whole image sit as well as this does with the rest of the scene. And if you do want that blue sky that the client requests, you've got it right here. We've also got an enhanced AI up here, so you can accent the image. We've got sky enhancer if you want even more blue sky. We've got atmosphere, and if you've ever tried to add fog in 3D, you know how hard this can be. So we can put like a nice haze on the image. Sun rays is really cool. If we pump this up, you can see it adds a sun, and then we can actually place it where we want it. So we can even pull it off screen or put in some God rays. So this is Lumina Neo and I've been using it for many months and it just keeps on getting better. So with all these tools fresh in your mind, you're probably wondering what else is out there to elevate your ArcViz projects. So take a look at this video next.